Hello and welcome to Metro Arts. I am your host, Larry Wallace. Here on Metro Arts, we highlight some of the best in the business, from fine artists, photographers, and performing artists, to cinematographers and musical artists, all from the Metro Detroit area. On today's show, we'll see the artistic fashion and the Creole by Kekka collection and meet designer Kenyatta Cardwell. We'll also explore the art of painter James Homer Brown and the power pop band Ryan Allen and his extra arms will perform in studio. Our first guest is Kenyatta Caldwell, the founder of Creole by Kekka. Welcome to Metro Arts. Thank you for having me. So can you tell us how did you first begin uh, brand, your brand? Um, my brand started about five years ago. Um, I was a buyer and buying bags from uh, different markets. And someone said, hey, why don't you just make some? And that's how this started. Cool. So Kenyatta, I'm really interested in how did you come up with the name? Creole by Kekka. Well, uh, Kekka is something I've had for, um, for years. Um, it's actually the first two letters of my first and last name. So mm -hmm. that was easy. The Creole part is actually supposed to be Latin for I make. So you put two, the, the two together and okay. that's how um, you've come with Creole by Kekka. And as a designer, what would you say your main source of inspiration comes from? Um, my main source of inspiration is just the people around me, my environment. Um, I take a lot of cues from structure. Um, I have a background in interior design, so shapes are, are a big point of what I design. Okay, cool. Now, I'm really interested to know how do you balance the creative process and the business side of fashion? Oh, my goodness. Um, yeah, that's a big question. Um, it's, it's tough. Uh, business is business, and it runs on time and creativity does not. So there's always uh, a struggle, but I'm thankful that I have a team that helps me keep that all together. So I'm grateful for them, yes. So you're a fashion designer in such a powerful city, mm -hmm. the city of Detroit. Yes. How would you say the Detroit fashion scene differs from any other place in the country and what makes you stay here? Um, well, Detroit is home. Detroit is roots. Um, and Detroit, because we're in the middle, I think we get a lot of uh, the both. We, we have a mixing going on here. So um, it's fun to see when people come out and based on our weather, you know, what people wear, you know, uh -huh. it's interesting. <laughs> but um, that, that helps the people that are here. Now, I really want to know, what are some of the fashion shows that you've been involved in? Um, I've been doing a myriad of shows since, um, uh, for about a year. I've been a part of the Fuller Woman, which embraces um, full-figured women. I've been a part of Styles, uh, Shades by You, um, and Raw Detroit or Raw Artists, and also the Vine Expo, and that's just a few. And now, what is it like preparing for those events? Um, it's chaos. It's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> um, honestly, it's chaos because right now I am... Uh, formalizing my brand to cater to specific sizes. Mm -hmm. So when we have model calls, a lot of times you get different shapes, you get different sizes, and you have to kind of dance around that. But I'm, I'm streamlining to where um, I have straight sizes and then I have a, a, a delineate, delineation I'm sorry, of wow. um, plus size. Okay, So cool. Now we're actually going to see an in-studio uh, fashion show. Yes. Can you tell us a little bit about what we're going to see? Yeah, so some of the looks you're going to see are from past shows, of course. Um, we also do some uh, local celebrity styling. So you'll see some looks that uh, may be familiar. And also, hopefully, our um, male model is here, okay. some menswear. So don't teeter too much into the menswear. Yeah. But I do have a background in tailoring, so I'm trying to just exercise that a little bit. Now, Kenyatta, you've actually brought some bags with you today. I Can did. Can you talk about those a little bit? Yeah, so we have um, a couple of sizes here. We actually have our smaller wristlet, which is normally out of um, some very sturdy home deck material, easy to just pop in a few essentials your phone, a credit card, a couple business cards, things like that. Our next size up is a clutch. You can actually put makeup or a couple things in there. You can transition, pop it in a tote, your favorite bag, and it won't, you know, won't change anything. Now, where does the designs come from? Actually, this was inspired by a friend of mine, um, Megan LaCroix, mm -hmm. um, and it's called Death by Obsession. Ooh. So <laughs> it is our compulsion <laughs> or narcissism, um, and it's her homage to that. So you can see some of the similar patterns here. 
Um, and this one is hand painted by myself and hand studded, and it's um, our Urban Lux, which is just a, a pop of glitz on some basic things. And then um, our Pyramid Pack, which is something I developed over a year or so ago. Um, I launched it, but I pulled it back because of uh, certain constraints, but it will be making its debut again. Um, it's a backpack that's a tri-shaped pyramid. Cool. So, now, Kenyatta, where can we find out more information about your fabulous designs? I am on all social media platforms at creobykeka.com is uh, the website. Um, you'll get more information and upcoming events and shows, and you can also see some background of things that I've done in the city, uh, entities I've worked with that has helped me forge what you see now. Okay, perfect. Well, Kenyatta, I want to thank you so much for being here. It was thank a pleasure you. interviewing you. Oh, likewise. Up next, let's enjoy some fashion. You're watching Metro Arts, produced for Detroit Public Television at Wayne State University. And here we have Heather, and she's wearing an Urban Lux look, distressed denim, hand-painted with copper paint, and a nice shimmery overcover in copper satin, copper sequin. And here we have Sonia. She's wearing an Urban Looks look as well. She has on distressed stretch knit gold and black pants with the sequin on the side and the icon jacket in black and gold. And here we have Natalia and she's wearing an Urban Lux look. She has the distressed knit gold and black pants and then we have a net top with gold accent zippers and the peekaboo sleeve. And here we have Miss Coco and she's wearing a signature look from Coco's Off the Cuff. It's a snake skin oversized top with a peekaboo sleeve and a nice comfortable palazzo pin. And here we have Sonia in our African inspired tube dress with oversized flower and an original Ancora print, yellow, gold, and purple. And here we have Heather in our maxi dress in bold colorful prints, just in time for spring. With a high split. And now, let's welcome painter James Homer Brown to Match Arts Detroit. Welcome, James. Oh, welcome. Thank you for being here. Welcome. Now, I'm really interested to know, what is the process that you go through when creating a piece? Ooh, well, first I, I get rabbit skin sizing mm -hmm. and paint that over the whole, um, what I'm gonna paint. Yeah. And when that dries, uh, then I can start with uh, just rubbing uh, oil colors into this uh, creation, whatever I'm creating, and um, waiting for it to dry. Yeah. 
Now, so, typically, how long does it usually take to create one piece? Something like this, probably about two or three months. Now, I really want to know, what is the main message that you want viewers to get from your painting? Well, actually, just the, um, the workmanship that's behind the painting. Now, I see you brought three pieces with you today. Can you tell us about each? Certainly. Uh, this one here is part of a series. I do series. I, yeah. I don't just do one painting uh -huh. of, of a subject that I'm painting. I, I do, do it in series. Interesting. And that way you have, you know, a half dozen or more uh, of the same thing, but different. Now, I, I see another colorful piece. Can you tell us about this one? Uh, carousel, yeah. Uh, and how long did it take for you to complete this one? That was uh, a lot harder okay. than, than I thought it was going to be. Now, I see these two are pretty colorful, but you went with a different direction of this one. Can you tell us about this one really quick? This basically was a futurism. Yeah. Usually there's a lot of white in this. Right. And, and, uh, but the white's not supposed to be there, and the, For sure. the other ones, they, they actually yeah. have it colored. So James, where could people find out more information about your artwork? Uh, JamesHomerBrown.com. Okay, cool. Well, James, I want to thank you so much for being here. It was a pleasure interviewing you. You're watching Metro Arts on Detroit Public Television. And now, let's welcome Ryan Allen and his extra arms to the Midtown Studio in Wayne State. Welcome. Thanks. Thanks so, for so the first thing I want to know, the name is really unique. Where did it come from? Uh, the original idea for the band was for me to, you know, write all the songs, make all the recordings, and, you know, play kind of the majority of the instruments, and then get all my friends who play in different bands around town to sort of, like, put the icing on the cake. And so that would be, like, the extra arms to the solo kind of artist kind of thing. So um, my first record uh, was very much like that. Um, it has not necessarily remained that way, and it's way more of like a, a just a band now, but that was the original concept. So you guys have been called a power pop band. How would you describe your music? Um, I mean, we're just like a melodic rock and roll band. You know, we write catchy songs. They're, you know, energetic, um, you know, they're, loud mm -hmm. uh, and so I guess th they're they're poppy there's there's power to it so I suppose that's a that's an accurate description for sure now how did the band come about um, so I've played in a bunch of bands over the years um, and I kind of you know was was in like a limbo state between different projects and I sort of was like I I'm just gonna do my own thing for a while see how it works and um, you know the first record like I said I made pretty much on my own with people kind of coming in at the end and playing stuff. The second record, Sean and I, we recorded together. Um, he played drums and I played everything else on it. And then the third record, I played everything on it, drums, bass, guitar, sang everything. But after that record came out, we sort of, you know, well, I wanted to play way more. I was really proud of the record. Yeah. And so Sean and I have been playing together for a long time, wow. um, you know, in different projects. 
and Mike and I have been friends since college. You know, Ryan and I have known each other for a long yeah. time. So, you know, we sort of like solidified this unit about a year ago. Yeah. Um, and we've been, you know, working on new material, and um, it feels like less of a solo project and more yeah. just like a full-on rock band. For sure. Now, I'm really interested to know about the writing process. Can mm -hmm. you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, I mean, um, I guess I come up with, you know, the, the sort of like base of the song, the, the sort of initial like chord structure and the lyrics and the melodies. Um, you know, demo them out a little bit, but, you know, the bands, my, my favorite bands are bands. You yeah. know, they're friends and they're people who are open to collaborating and, you know, the, the, you can certainly get st stuff done faster if you For just sure. say like, do this, do that, do this, but you know, you sort of miss out on other people bringing their own ideas to the table. So, you know, we're about eight songs deep into writing a wow. record right now, and everybody's kind of bringing their own flavors to it. And, you know, I really like that about this kind of yeah. era of the group. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm excited to kind of like solidify it on a recording. Wow. Now, real quick, can you tell us a little bit about the two songs that you're going to perform today? Yeah, the first song uh, is called Headacre. Um, I wrote it the day after uh, the election, mm -hmm. um, and sort of just about like waking up the next day and feeling kind of out of sorts. And um, you know, prior to uh, the, the vote or whatever, yeah. um, you know, when you're on social media or whatever, and you're looking through your newsfeed, everybody you see who you're friends with more or less feels the same way about you know things politically that, that that you do, and you sort of like live in this this bubble. Where you know if you say something political or something, uh, you know uh, about politics online, sure. pretty much everybody's going to agree with you who you're friends with. Yeah. And then you know waking up the next day and being like, oh, this is not how the rest of the world necessarily thinks, yeah. or at least that's the the feeling that I had that day. You know. So that that's what that song's about. Um, the second song is called Done to Death, and that's more kind of just like commentary on, you know, just like disposable. Uh, you know, uh, music really, I guess. Mm -hmm. You know, you can apply it to other things, but just kind of like how culture sort of like easily throws things away um, and doesn't like want to spend time with stuff as much anymore yeah. as, as I was used to when I was in high school, like learning about music and going to the record store and, you know, flipping through CDs or records and just mm -hmm. like buying something based off the cover art and not even yeah. knowing what it sounded like. And now people are just like, oh yeah, I heard one of their songs, I don't like it. Or yeah. I heard a song, I like it, mm -hmm. but then something else comes along and just replaces it. So so this that song's kind of addressing Definitely. that. Definitely. Now where could people find out more information about Ryan Allen and his Extra Arms? Uh, the best place is our band camp. Um, it's just extraarms.bandcamp.com. That's where you can listen to all the records. You know, we have a Facebook page, facebook.com slash extra arms. We have an Instagram, which is, uh, I think it's at Ryan Allen and his extra arms. So, you know, just Google Ryan Allen and his extra arms. You'll find all that stuff. Okay. Um, it's pretty easy to, sure. to locate us. Well, I want to thank you guys so much for coming. I'm really excited to see your performance. Thank you. And now here's Ryan Allen and his extra arms. You're watching Metro Arts produced at the Midtown Studio at Wayne State University.
We hope you enjoyed today's show. I would like to thank our guests, Kenyatta Caldwell and her models, James Homer Brown, and the band Ryan Allen and his extra arms for being here today. Remember, you can watch any of our shows online at MetroArtsDetroit.com and find us on social media. I'm your host on Metro Arts, Larry Wallace, reminding you to always support the arts and cultivate the talent in your community.